In this video I'm going to look at thiosulfate titrations. Now these are an extension of the redox titrations and so I would suggest that you watch those videos until you're secure on your understanding of redox titrations before you move into these because thiosulfate titrations are a little bit more difficult. So we're going to start with the premise that oxidizing agents such as copper 2 plus ions, ClO minus ions and IO3 minus ions, these are the three examples often quoted, um, these can oxidize iodide ions to iodine. So I've got an example for you there involving the Cu2 plus ion. So you can see in the equation here the um, Copper 2 plus ions are converted into CuI, that's copper 1 iodide. So the copper 2 plus has been reduced to copper 1 plus in there. And in turn, the iodide ions are oxidized to iodine. And just as I did in the two redox titration videos, I'm just going to use these simple diagrams to try and help you visualize what's happening. So we've got the oxidizing agent in this first conical flask here. So in this example, these would be the copper 2 plus ions. So we're introducing iodide ions to this flask. This reaction takes place and it will go brown because iodine has been formed. Now the iodine that's been produced in this first reaction that is then titrated with a solution of sodium thiosulfate and we know the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate and the equation for that reaction you can see is written down here. So these are the thiosulfate ions. This is the iodine produced in this first reaction and this reaction takes place and the results of this titration are fed into the equation, this equation first, and then it sort of works backwards, ultimately back to the original oxidizing agent, and most questions involve calculating something about the oxidizing agent. We're going to spend a couple of minutes looking at the titration itself. So we've got the iodine produced um, in the first reaction and here's our burette with the thiosulfate ions of known concentration and the titration takes place. Now as this reaction occurs the iodine is obviously converted into iodide ions and so this brown colour will start to um, get paler and paler. So eventually it will look something like that. So it's sort of gone a yellow colour and that means there's still a little bit of iodine in there and um, what we're after is ultimately we need to know how many moles of iodine are in there, how much iodine is in there. So this is just going to get paler and paler and paler and paler until it goes colourless. Now the problem is, it's very difficult to see when the palest of yellow goes colourless. So there's a, a neat trick that we use to help us notice the end point much more clearly. And so what they do is when your flask is a pale yellow colour, or sometimes known as a pale straw colour, we add some starch indicator. So there can be the tiniest amount of iodine present. And if you remember from biology, starch indicator goes a blue-black colour. And so your flask would look like that. The tiniest amount of iodine would cause that to be present. And now it's very easy to see when the iodine has all gone. And so you get this nice immediate change of colour from the blue-black to the colourless. That's a lot easier to spot than the palest of yellow 
and it's quite dark yellow at the moment. I don't have a lighter felt tip pen. I'm sure you can appreciate what I'm saying here. It's much more difficult to see that colour change than that colour change. So just before um, all of the iodine's gone, you've got this pale yellow colour. You add some starch, it goes very dark blue, and then you can see the colour change, the end point, much more clearly. So we'll have a go at the question now. So I've got this question that involves the copper 2 plus ion um, acting as an oxidising agent. Um, so again, like I did before, we've got a visualisation of the information in the question. So we've got a, a sample of copper 2 sulphate and that's been dissolved in water to produce this 250 cm cubed solution of Cu2 plus ions. 25 cm cubed of that's taken out. So we're going to have a scaling factor to sort out here when we get to that part of the calculation. So 25 cm cubed of the copper 2 plus um, solution is taken, put into a conical flask, and excess Ki is added, so the I minus ion is the important one there. And that's added to the copper 2 plus solution. That's going to liberate iodine, so that's why I've got this brown flask here. And the iodine produced is titrated with the thiosulfate solution, sodium thiosulfate solution of known concentration. And you can see there 20.2 centimetres cubed was needed. So ultimately, we're going to work back to this original flask and work out the concentration of the copper sulfate solution that's in there. So the first thing we're going to calculate is based around the titration. So we know that 20.2 cm cubed of 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed thiosulfate was needed. So we can calculate how many moles of thiosulfate were required. And concentration times volume in decimeters cubed gives us 4.04 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of thiosulfate. And you can see the mole ratio in the titration equation is 2 to 1. So therefore the moles of iodine that were in that flask is going to be half that amount. So that's 2.02 .02 times 10 to the minus 3. So I've brought the other equation into play now. This was the reaction that took place in this flask when the excess Ki was added to the copper sulfate solution. And what's important to appreciate is the moles of iodine produced by the first reaction, well, where did they come from? They came from this equation here. And what's important to appreciate is obviously how these two equations link together. The moles of iodine that were involved in the titration, well, where did they come from? They came from this first reaction the one that took place in this flask here. And you can see therefore that these moles have got to be the same because this iodine here is this iodine here. So hopefully we've got our head round that. So now we know the moles of iodine, we can look at the mole ratio between the iodine that's liberated in this very first reaction and the oxidising agent, well, you can see that a 1 to 2 ratio here, so we'll just double it back up again. So 4.04 .04 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of Cu2 plus ions must have been in here. So we'll scale it up now. So if there were 4.04 .04 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of copper 2 plus ions in there, that means that there's 10 times that in this 250 cm cubed flask. So obviously there are 4.04 .04 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of Cu2 plus in that flask there. So now we know the moles of copper 2 plus in here and the volume that the solution had we can work out the concentration. So that's the moles divided by the volume in decimeters cubed. 
and to three significant figures that comes out at 0.162 moles per decimeter cubed. So we'll do one more of these and um, I've already got the visualization on the board for you. So quickly run through it and then if you want you can pause the video and have a go at it yourself and then obviously play on and see if you got it right. I'm sure you will. So impure copper 0.9 grams it's reacted with nitric acid that's going to turn the copper atoms in the impure copper into copper ions one to one ratio there so we've got this solution of copper two plus ions excess ki is added to this that's going to produce the iodine that's gone brown the thiosulfate is added via a titration we know the concentration of the thiosulfate it's 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed and we're told that the average titer was 23.7 centimetres cubed. And what we have to do is work out what percentage of this impure copper was actually copper to three significant figures. So we'll pause the video, have a go, and then see if you got it right. So the moles of thiosulfates first. That's 0.5 concentration times 0.0237, which is the volume in decimeters cubed. And that comes out at 0.01185 moles of thiosulfate. From the mole ratio in this equation, we can say that the moles of iodine will be half the moles of thiosulfate. And that comes out at 5.925 times 10 to the minus 3. Here's the original reaction that produced the iodine. And remember... These are the same because this iodine is this iodine. So they are the same. The moles of copper 2 plus that produce this iodine that was used in the titration is obviously double that. We've already got that value there, so we'll double it back up 0 0.01185. So if the moles of copper 2 plus are 0.01185 that means the moles of copper it's also 0.01185 and so the mass of copper is the moles times its MR and it comes out at 0.7525 grams so of that 0.9 grams of impure copper we now know that the grams of copper in there is that amount there so as a percentage, that's obviously the mass of copper over the mass of the impure copper times 100, 83.6% to three significant figures. Did you get it right? I bet you did.